Uh, welcome back. So this time I'm going to talk to you about a little bit uh, about sanding, uh, the prepping the surface uh, from the tools for the sanding so you minimize your time uh, at sanding stage. So uh, we're going to make a level like this, a uh, tiny plate for babies. <laughs> this is actually the right size for, for my uh, toddler. So, um, so we'll get to that. Uh, so the, the star of this video is this color-coded sandpaper. Now I contacted uh, Craft Supply USA and um, I spoke with uh, Mike Niche there and um, uh, which by the way, uh, thank you Mike for sending this lovely stuff. Um, he sent me a smock uh, with short sleeves, which is actually quite nice to wear. Uh, one for me and one for my wife. And now she doesn't have any excuses to um, not taking lesson from me in the uh, in the wood turning. So, uh, why did I contact them about this paper? Um, for a while now, I wanted to try this uh, color coded uh, sandpaper. So it's uh different colors for different grids so white is 120 180 is yellow and you've probably seen this uh for those of you who follow richard uh, he uses this uh, sandpaper and um for many many years now i contacted uh, craft supply because they were the only one that i could find that sell uh these kind of sandpaper um and in Australia, I believe there is a store as well. Um, so you can imagine it's quite hard to get these. Uh, and the shipping and the customs and everything is quite uh, a challenge. So once again, I thank you Craft Supply for sending these uh, samples. Uh, why I choose this uh, sandpaper is uh, to try it out. Is I want to compare it somewhat to, let's say, Klingspor or a Norton brand. Uh, which I've used before. Uh, the reason I stopped using those brands is uh, not because of them, it's uh, more because of um, the distributor here in Croatia. It was too um, not reliable enough, let's say. So the first few orders that I put in, they were okay. I would get the Norton or Klingsporn brand of uh, grids, uh, but lately I was getting the uh, some wild uh, brand it only says EU on the back it was blue and it was rubbish uh, it was really really probably the worst paper I've used and uh, they on their own decision uh, they sent me those papers a few times when I explicitly said that I want Klingspor or Norton brand um, but I digressed here a little bit um, Sorry about the noise, so the father-in-law uh, across the wall is doing his thing. So the reason I uh, wanted to try this paper is to see if it's uh, close to those brands like Klingspor or uh, Norton. And uh, just a little spoiler alert, um, I would say it's the same level as those sandpaper. Um, I like using Klingspor or Norton, they are quite nice uh, cloth backed sandpapers uh, but these have this other feature, this uh, color coded backs so the 180 is yellow completely uh, 240 is blue let's say and uh, 400 is green and that features come uh, really really great and uh, I'll get to that feature uh, a little bit in a, in a few minutes okay so this is the drawer uh, the top drawer here uh, this is where I keep all the sandpapers and uh, for now many many months uh, you've seen me use this this is from Indasa uh, it's a rhino grip white line uh, product and it's great it's a great paper and uh, there's nothing wrong with it um, per se but uh, where I have limitations with it is for instance uh, if I want something a uh, small piece like this for uh, when I'm making boxes and uh, stuff like that uh, you have to cut this paper and uh, 
I have it cut in this kind of uh, format for the hand sanding. Uh, that works for me, but it will be another step to cut it, let's say, into this dimension, so maybe in thirds. And uh, sometimes I don't need uh, that kind of dimensions, and there are other times when I need all of these dimensions, so uh, it's a little bit like confusing and uh, uh, time consuming, better word. Uh, so what I found found this excellent for is I cut it into discs and uh, you can see I have it here and um, I can just cut it with a, a razor blade and uh, it's really fast so it's not that terribly uh, difficult um, and uh, I only use these uh, for uh, mostly for inside of the bowls uh, bigger bowls. Uh, on the smaller one, I use sandpaper by hand, sanding by hand, and finish it with a rotary sander, inertia sander like this. The Indasa sandpaper is great, either for this kind of format or um, uh, cutting into disc. I kind of like um, cloth backed um, flexibility and how it warps, feels, and bends around the bowl and sort uh, all different shapes and uh, details so uh, where the Indasa sandpaper is it's flexible but not to this extent so it, it is a little bit different and um, now uh, this color coded comes in handy uh, for instance if I want a piece like this I can just easily tear it and uh, I can fold it in three and uh, if I now have something really tiny, small and then now I can use it, if I need even less I can tear it into half and uh, use it like this. So, and uh, this is by the way the used one, I wouldn't tear uh, a fresh one <laughs> like this. Um, so if I need, let's say, a size like this for uh, small boxes, uh, so I would bend it in three, fold it in three, and uh, now this is far more convenient than having a, a bigger uh, piece. And uh, if I don't, if I only use like this one side, I have on uh, two other sides to use. I I could put this into drawer, and uh, when I need it again, it's just I I unfold it, and I can see by the color uh, that it's uh, one eighty grit. So. It's a quick way of identifying uh, what grit is, it. and um, not many, or at least I think that uh, many manufacturers could uh, implement this kind of uh, uh, back instead of just numbers. Uh, the cutting the, the paper into smaller chunks like this has other benefits. Uh, for instance, if I'm making a small box, uh, this could fit pretty much inside. Uh, of small box and I would use all of this sandpaper to uh, to its full where if I use the full piece I might use only uh, a third which will fit in so uh, and uh, the other a third here on the other sides and the middle will be um, unused now if I remember I would bring this paper and I would use it on a bowl where I can use uh, this portion but uh, usually, if you're anything like me, you tend to um, either forget or uh, it's just stuck in the drawer and you don't know either which grit is it or um, that you used only the this portion and the middle is clean. So um, this way, if you can uh, break it uh, quickly into chunks that you need, uh, that way you will be much more efficient, believe me. In your sanding and uh, sometimes all you need is actually this kind of piece so you use it sand it like this throw it away you know you're done with that and uh, yeah, so that's my take on this why I uh, choose this uh, sandpaper to try out and uh, now, now I'm going to uh, mount uh, this piece of uh, cherry this is core out version 
and uh, usually people think that because this is a core like this and it looks like a ball shape you only can use it as a ball but uh, you'll see we'll make a little nice a little uh, plate so here is the plate uh, blink uh, and uh, this is the the plate that I already did so a little wider rim small bead and a nice um, ball part here so that's what we're going to make uh, I already have a groove here inside so that will expand our chuck um, the chuck will expand <laughs> inside of it not over so um, just light pressure and when expanding we don't have to use a lot of it uh, now the the sending process uh, starts way earlier than you might uh, think so um, I'll let you know when we get to that stage but um, first thing is to just throw it up I'm using a ball gouge Just take the uneven part away and uh, I'll pull up the, the diameter and the top face. Just to see if there is any hidden uh, split crack anything like that looks quite solid this edge is quite sharp and uh, just the other day I cut myself on it so always a good idea to take it off now uh, I would like some sort of a OG shape on it go for a nice sheer cut uh, from here Oh, I could bring the speed a little bit more. probably use this so I'll use this uh, foot actually a tenon and we'll remove it later and uh, like I said I would like a little bigger base so this is close to turn let's get it a little bit more like so um, I think I have enough room inside. <laughs> now I can start on uh, OG a little bit more. Refine it with a scraper. So this is the stage where you start to sand your project so the tool finish that you get is quite important um, on uh, at which stage you're going to start sanding so if you have a really really lousy finish uh, from the tool 
it will take you probably with the 120 grit more time or even 80 grit it depends on how bad it is or if you have a really good surface then you can start with 180 uh, to 40 320 and be done so try to show you so this is from shear scraping uh, watch here where it's the most focused area so as I spin it you'll see that's just clean surface and I'm quite pleased with that so that wouldn't take too much too long to sand and um, I'll before that I'll start this just slightly tilted in and uh, get a nice clean corner here so the chop will register nicely so I'll start with uh, 180 grit and there is still a new stuff here so I'll use that before I uh, make myself another piece and uh, uh, 240 probably 320 and use the inertia sander to just uh, remove all the sanding marks and uh, that will be it so I'll just turn on the uh, dust extractor and uh, we'll set off So that's few seconds with 180 grit, so I'll just uh, flip it uh, in reverse and do a few seconds and that should be it. So that's 180, that's all nice, uh, 240, you always want to fold it uh, in three, uh, the main reason for that is, first of all, if you use it in a single layer like this, you'll destroy the, your sandpaper extremely fast. It will build up heat and it will destroy it. So you want to some buffer zone between you, the wood and the heat. And this way the, the heat will dissipate more easily and uh, you have a little more buffer between the fingers and uh, the paper and the wood. So. That's 240. That's all nice. about this paper it blends the grids nice and uh, clean what I mean by that is every next step the grid uh, nicely send away the previous one without too much of a marks some papers are too aggressive even if it's high grid like 320 
can be quite aggressive and uh, you can still see the marks quite visible. Now I don't mind a few rotation marks like this on a piece, especially if it's going to be used. But if it's going for a client, then obviously I want to get rid of all of the, the marks or the best I can. So that's 320 and that's pretty good surface and that took with talking and uh, uh, all that maybe like not even two minutes so I'll just hit this with inertia sander this is yeah so I think this is 360 grit which I have in this uh, format uh, but I didn't write it so and it doesn't say here so color coded for all the same papers will be quite quite nice Actually, it won't be it. Uh, this is quite worn out, so it doesn't leave the surface as I want it to. So, just grab a flash one. One. As best I, if I can help myself, I will try to cut the paper uh, where the number is. Or. Uh, Please write it down. That's much better. So that's all nice and good now much better and uh, I'll actually apply the finish now the finish uh, will be this Klephams Bees uh, Wax Salad Bowl finish it puts on quite nicely and uh, you can put it on a spinning bowl like this and gives a nice polish to it so I just uh, apply it a little bit by, by hand Uh, this product was sent to me for free uh, but with no uh, obligations whatsoever so it's a nice stuff to use and it's always nice to support a small company like this family owned company so uh, it's based in canada so i can't like uh, say the, uh, to support a local company since they're not close to me but And this is silky smooth once you buff it because of the high content of wax in it. So, as you can see, nice surface. Okay, so, <laughs> I had to readjust the camera and uh, I shut it off. And uh, as again, I forgot to turn it on. And now, fortunately, I did look for it and uh, look at it and uh, see that it doesn't record so uh, what I've done actually was just shape here the, uh, this part of the rim and uh, just show you I did already scraped it but I want to show you how I uh, finesse the curve and uh, get the finish I want for the sanding process so I support the back of the cut with my hand, with my fingers, nice and light. Okay. 
it should read. You'll see this surface now is ready for sanding. So the, the next thing is, I just want to chew up this part here. A little bit at least. And uh, actually I'll start to follow. So I have around 2 mil between, beneath the center point uh, to go, so not extremely a lot of wood, but bring the rest a little bit closer. That feels like a good cut. And now with the spindle gouge, I just want to shape uh, this half bead to a nice corner here. And that feels quite nice. Just round it over a bit more. To see if those marks are gone. Uh, nope, it's still here. The original marks, so that needs to go. It's a nice shear scrape, and at the end of the cut, I close the flute. Let's see now. Still a little here. That now feels right. You can check it one more time. And that's that's quite nice. There is a slide here which I want to get rid of. So you get nice crisp corner. And uh, now just for the hollow. Sharp, uh, the gouge needs sharpening, so I'll grab another one. Let's see if this one is a little bit sharper. Okay, that looks quite nice. Scraper. There's a little bump here. Okay, and 
that will be sanded, sanding quite nicely. So actually there is a light, slight ridge here, so try to get that as well. So 180 grit. Speed I'll send with uh, 240 or 320. I'll just go with 180 into corner. So you can see little marks here, scraping marks. Those will go away. Quickly, just put it in the reverse. Just with this grit, I'll slightly go over the beam. the orange one I don't go over the bead. Use the cleaner part of 
paper towel or rag or whatever you're using. looking plate just take it off and we'll finish the bottom you can see nice green kind of widely spread wild <laughs> doesn't have any connections it is quite close to it's not the same size obviously but it's quite close to this design. So I have here a little paper towel, put that over the plate. Now what I've should done is mark myself center or just poke uh, with the tail stuck so, but I didn't do that but it's not a big deal don't worry about this paper flying here decoration here like so uh, 240 on a drill and 360 Let's go lightly one more time over the the whole piece with pretty much dry stuff uh, stuff just to uh, polish it up from the dust and still have this piece. And 
voila nice quick little plate for my toddler so that will be quite nice uh, if you're on the market for a nice uh, sandpaper and uh, quite easy to use and uh, uh, with this color coded back I highly recommend this and um, yeah, I'll just <laughs> I find I'll, I hope I'll uh, find uh, the solution for uh, that customs and everything uh, because they and shipping because they charge quite a lot of money to get something from the United States uh, so uh, but uh, it cuts quite nicely uh, aggressively but uh, the grits blend each other quite nicely so that's like I said it's an issue with uh, some papers uh, although it's high grit like 400 600 but they don't blend their um, grits um, nicely it's too aggressive even for that fine grit so these are quite nice and uh, once again thank you uh, mike and uh, craft supply usa and uh, yeah now to head for dinner <laughs>